Sexual Harassment Prevention, presented by the Todd County School District. You have the most important job in the world. Each day, you're a positive role model for a child. Each day, you influence a child's life. Sexual harassment, what is it? And what laws protect you? The EEOC definition of sexual harassment is unwanted, unwelcome, unsolicited sexual advances, requests for sexual favors and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature constitute sexual harassment when Submission to said conduct is made explicitly or implicitly a condition of employment or academic advancements. Submissions to or rejection of such conduct is used as the basis for decisions affecting employment or academic advancement. Such conduct has the purpose or effect of unreasonably interfering with a person's work or academic performance, or creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment. The categories of sexual harassment. Quid pro quo sexual harassment. This means something given or withheld for something else. A hostile environment sexual harassment a work or learning environment which interferes with a person's ability to function normally without intimidation, fear, or sexually harassing behaviors. Such behaviors may be visual, verbal, or physical. Laws Against Sexual Harassment Title IX of the, of the 1964 Civil Rights Act protects against gender discrimination in educational programs and activities. Title VII, 1964 Civil Rights Act, prohibits job discrimination based on race, color, religion, national origin, or gender. Executive Order 90-7, State of South Dakota, protects employees from sexual harassment. South Dakota, South Dakota Human Relations Act of 1972 protects against discrimination based on race, color, creed, religion, gender, ancestry, disability, or national origin, and against retaliation against someone who files a, a complaint. Title IX. No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be ex excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. That's Title IX of the Education 1972 20 U point S point C point amendments of section 1681. Sexual harassment. What does it look like? Sexual harassment can happen like this. Male to female, female to male, male to male, female to female. Adult to student, student to student, adult to adult, volunteer to student, student to volunteer, public citizen to teacher, student to student. In any case, regardless who is doing the harassing, it is illegal. Sexual harassment versus inappropriate behavior. Is the conduct sexual in nature or gender-based? Is the conduct unwelcome or unwanted? Is the conduct severe, persistent, and pervasive? Does the conduct unreasonably interfere 
with work or study? What evidence is there for unreasonable interference? Sexual harassment, unwelcome physical contact such as touching, grabbing, pinching, blocking a doorway or a hallway, sexual comments, sexual jokes, verbal teasing, or kidding. How to determine if you are being sexually harassed? Ask yourself the following questions. Power. Is someone exerting power over you? Unwanted. Is the behavior unwanted by you? Feelings effects. It, is the behavior producing negative feelings that are affecting your schoolwork, activities, or job performance? Sexual harassment is not about sexual attraction. It's about power, specifically the misuse of power. Eight myths about sexual harassment. Myth number one. If females would just say no, it would stop. Myth number two. Harassment will stop if a person just ignores it. Myth number three, if females watched the way they dressed, there would be not be a problem with sexual harassment. Myth number four, oh, sexual harassment is no big deal. It's the natural way males and females express affection and friendship with each other. Myth number five, most people enjoy sexual attention at work and school. <laughs> Teasing and flirting make work and school fun. Myth number six. Sexual harassment is harmless. Persons who object have no sense of humor or don't know how to accept a compliment. Myth number seven. Sexual harassment policies will negatively affect friendly relationships between students and teachers, or those between male and female students. Myth number eight, nice people could not possibly be harassers. Why schools must be concerned. School officials have a duty to train, a duty to investigate, a duty to remedy, and a duty to monitor. Sexual harassment, a continuum, a continuum of unwanted sexual and gender directed behavior patterns. Visual includes posters, cartoons, magazines, pinups, and gestures. Verbal, lewd comments or rumors, whistling, obscene calls. Written, love letters or poems, obscene letters, graphics. Touch, patting, pinching, bra snapping, blocking. Power, gender-directed favoritism, hazing rituals. Threats, quid pro quo, retaliation, loss of job or position. Force attempted or actual rape, pantsing, and stalking. What does everybody need to know about sexual harassment? Handling sexual harassment complaints. Take the report seriously. Listen, sympathize, but don't judge. Don't delay. Respond to concerns. Document. Follow up on the complaint and avoid using dangerous words. Dangerous words. When responding to a complaint, be careful that these words don't come out of your mouth. It's just teasing, no big deal. Oh, the people in our school would never do. do. Well, it's your fault for dressing so provocatively. You need to learn to handle these things. Just ignore it. He puts his arms around everyone. Why 
can't you just learn to accept a compliment? Well, you must have wanted it, otherwise you would have told him no. That's how they do things where he comes from. Well, it's a joke, just lighten up. No one's filed a ch charge, so our hands are tied. We've never had a complaint, so we don't have a problem. This kind of behavior is all part of growing up. Well, it's just a matter of hormones. We can't control that. If we had to discipline every student who used bad language, we'd never get anything else done. It's just a prank that got out of hand. Oh well, boys will be boys. What should we all do? We should all be sensitive to the differences between harassment and flirting. We should speak up if we see someone being harassed. We should all know our responsibilities and our rights. What should be done when encountering harassment? While staff can often correct inappropriate behavior, sometimes the behavior is more serious than an isolated incident might, might suggest. When a staff member senses that a more systemic problem may lie behind a particular incident, he or she should follow these five steps. Steps to take. Number one, remedy the immediate situation. Stop the behavior so the activities may continue. Two, speak to the offending student. Make him or her aware that the behavior is unexpected unacceptable. Three, speak to the student who was offended. Find out his or her feelings about the incident. Try to find out if the behavior has occurred before. Number four, if you think the behavior could be sexual harassment, report it to an administrator or the school's Title IX coordinator, and that would be Monica Ron. If you deem it necessary or the student requests it, separate the students from one another. Personal Behavior Checklist Maintaining harassment-free schools is critical for encouraging an open learning environment, productive and happy employees, good relationships between students and employees of both genders. Use the following checklist to look at how you behave. Does this behavior contribute to getting our goals accomplished? Could this behavior hurt my fellow employees or other students if they were, were here? Could this behavior be interpreted as harmful or harassing by an outsider? Could this behavior be sending out signals that invite harassing behavior on the part of others. The rule of thumb is, when in doubt, don't. What should you know about harassment investigations and liability? The initial interview, a checklist. Provide assurances of non-retaliation and confidentiality, but do not give an unqualified promise of confidentiality. Maintain neutrality and non-judgmental demeanor, but sympathetically acknowledge the person's emotional state. If appropriate, acknowledge that the conduct is not allowed under the institution's policy or by law. Don't blame the person or allow the person to assess self-blame. Help the person clarify and understand the experience by explaining what sexual harassment is. Ask what the person would like to happen. 
assess whether this is appropriate, and how it can be implemented. Discuss options such as informal and formal. Explain how you or others in the institution can help. Urge the person to write an account of the incident or incidents, including what happened, responses, dates, times, names or witnesses, and other details. If appropriate, inform the person of available counseling. Provide the person with written materials about sexual harassment. Encourage the person to call or return if harassment reoccurs or if help is needed. Make a follow-up appointment. Be sure to fo follow to verify that harassment has stopped and is not likely to recur. Record in writing this and subsequent conversations. Who should investigate? Person designated to investigate sexual harassment complaints should be knowledgeable about the legal rights and responsibilities of all parties, experienced in handling complaints or concerns, familiar with the organization's structure, policies, and practices, outside the party's chain of command, and credible. A trained facilitator, counselor, or someone who others find it easy to confide in. Outside counsel or an external consultant, consultant if neutrality and objectivity will be an issue. A male and female team, if possible, to increase complainant's comfort level. Investigations. Focus on the following, the effect of the behavior, expected standards of behavior, the context of the behavior, the welcomeness of the behavior, patterns of behavior, credibility. Ensuring a successful investigation. Take all complaints and claims seriously. Keep an open mind. Investigate promptly. Be thorough. Document all parts of the investigation. Preserve privacy. Act in a neutral and professional manner. Refer to the school's non-retaliation policy to everyone involved in the investigation. Legal issues. Confidentiality, non-retaliation, defamation, safeguarding documents. Here are some important contacts if you have more questions. You can count, contact the U.S. Department of Education, Office of Civil Rights, 10220 10 North Executive Hills Boulevard, 8th floor, Kansas City, Missouri, 64153. In the state level, you can contact the South Dakota Department of Commerce and Regulation, Division of Human Rights, 118 West Capitol, Pierce, South Dakota, 57501. Locally, you should contact Monica Ron, Human Resources Coordinator, Todd County School District, 856-3501, extension 2105. You can contact her by email at mron at tcsdk12.org. Her office is located in the district office.